Okay, so we're still talking about using open strings. This time we're going to put the capo on the third fret because we're in the key of C on this one. And the fifth of C, C, E, G is G, right? So we want to put it on the fifth here. So we're going to use our pentatonic scale, position four right here. right here and position one right here two right here and then three right here So a double position would be position four. And five together. And that's a really good pattern. So I'm going to put one on this track. It's a C minor track. Uh, it's going to start right away. So here we go. So here we go, we got Now you can use the open strings with this. Do these pull-offs. Hear the plus? Look what I did. Can you try down here? Okay, you can do a position five right here. Okay, then you can do the uh, the angled fist like this. Got the open G here. So we got there's a nine there. That's really not in the kind of tonic scale, but in minor it's the nine sounds really good. Okay, so that's the pentatonic scale ideas. Now we can always use C minor scale. Now I would suggest you familiarize yourself with going over, playing it with the capo like this. The next position. So the positions that are 
down here by the cable, you can add the open strings like this. Don't forget you can uh, play on the E string, skip to the D string, go back to the A string, go up to the G string, so the pattern's like this. Okay, let's try that one again and see. Try a couple, couple, couple more ideas. Okay, so here we go. We got C here. Now remember, that's one of my favorite lines right there. Is when you got the root right there, you can do this. Now add the open strings. You can take the open string. That note was a, a screw up. But oh, that was like a save. See. Another thing is when you bend notes with a cable, sometimes they go out of position, so you got to sort of muscle them back. Okay, so now we're up in the major. Uh, not the major, but the minor pentatonic root position. And you got these open strings. Back of it. Okay, so you got these angular patterns with the open strings. Favorite one. It's right there, the root on the, on the G string. Now you can do this too. You can take a, a ring finger, slide it on the D string, and pull off with your index finger. Like,
go to the G string. Okay, so that's the key of C. All right, so the next one is going to be E minor. This one's going to be sort of a busy track. You download these, just download all these tracks off the website, okay? So this one's just going to be a, a real busy track. So it's E minor. Now remember with E minor, uh, you can use the open strings and you can put the capo on the fifth of E minor. So this is a, a real busy track. So what do you do on a busy track? Sorry about that. So for busy tracks, what you want to do is the listener's preoccupied with all this busyness, right? So what you got to do is when you solo, go the opposite. Play long notes like this. See, that's sort of smoothed out, but we can play with faster notes over that. Now here's the place to play long notes. Two different textures, the, the percussive rhythm behind you. Build up. Busy again, so you slow down your notes. Whenever you've got a rhythm section that gets really busy, you need to either go faster than them or slow down and just put these soaring notes, you know. Now here's an opportunity to play fast. See what I'm talking about? So you play fast. It complements that after you play the slow part first. See what I'm saying? Showing a symmetrical scale. So that's like 
when you get real busy. Now another one, this next one's going to be an E minor, but it's like a stop time type of thing where uh, the band like does this uh, break, these breaks, these multiple breaks in stop time. So you want to work on that too. So the stop time, if you got a, again, the rule of thumb is if you have a really busy rhythm section, you need to like play like whole notes and like soaring notes over that. And then you can build into something fast. You don't want to go fast right away. You really don't. Because the listeners just get washed out with fast. You know, they it doesn't sound fast after a while. So this is stop time. So you got long notes. Listeners are gonna get bored of that. You wanna go into a longer melody, like a melodic idea. So I'm making more of a melody out of it. Open string. I'm doing the reverse. I can go fast.
Okay, for this key here, it's C sharp or D flat. So what you want to do is you want to put the capo at the fourth fret. Now a lot of guys will drop tune down to D flat or C sharp. I prefer doing it this way. I teach so many students that uh, you know everybody comes in with a different tuning. So I'm constantly detuning and retuning and retuning, wearing out strings really fast that way. So I like to use capo instead for a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, so for this key, C sharp or D flat, you put the capo at the fourth fret. So right here. Okay, so then you've got your scales here. You've got your position four there. Now you got this open B string at the fourth fret open, but. And then position five right here at the ninth at the seventh fret. And then the root position on the ninth fret. Once again, when you bend these, you can slide it over here. It sort of moves out of position, so you got to push it back. Okay, the next position, position two, would be at the tenth fret or twelfth fret, and the next one would be at the second fret. So you've got open string, and you've got and you've got this pattern here. And you've got this double pattern, actually the uh, fifth pattern. A lot of ways you can do that. You can keep going up there. Okay, so make sure capo's here at the fourth fret for C sharp or D flat. So instead of drop tuning down to D flat, I put the cable on the fourth fret. To do these pull ups. D minor scale, T e flat minor. It's like a Richie Blackmore kind of idea. It's like this.
flat right there, see? Busy bass line, so you can take some long solos. You know, it complements it. So you gotta move around and flex around with it and just try to try different things, okay? Uh, this one here is E minor again. I don't know about that one. <laughs> that was the end of a, some other track. Okay, this number, this one is E minor. Okay, so E minor again, we got our open string. And of course, I like to do this. So this is E minor, D, D minor, sorry, D minor. So here you got a D minor again. G is open. D is open. A is open. But the E string and the B string and the and the E and the B string are not going to work. So you have to stay within these these three strings: the A string, the D string, and the G string. Me done. Avoid the open E. Doesn't sound quite right. So you gotta do the G string. So I prefer doing this open string stuff 
with a capo on the fifth third because that's A and D. It, the fifth of D is A, right? You got it right here. And you got these patterns. Go up like Bend, you can push the string out of out of wax. You gotta slide it a little back down, see like that. See? You can open the strings here. Okay, so we got that done. That's D minor. Some other solo going on here. Okay, with the open strings, you got. Five right here, and then right here, and I like these fifth patterns. And then come back with the X pattern like this. So again, that's. There's a lot of ways you can do that. You can do that here and go up here and then keep going up. Go to the third string. It's all D minor, okay? So you've got to start experimenting with these, okay? So there's going to be a few more of these I want to put on here, uh, starting on the next video, okay? So that was D minor, so we're going to do a few more of these, and then uh, we're going to talk later about uh, some other types of tracks where we can do some um, muting versus wide open, string skipping phrasing, and slow phrasing in vibrato. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video.